Today we're going to talk about the different types of reactions. The first one is synthesis reaction. The second one is decomposition, followed by single displacement or single replacement reactions, double displacement or double replacement reactions, and combustion reactions. Combustion reactions are two kinds. One is complete combustion and the other is incomplete combustion. Let's look at synthesis first. By definition, when two or more elements combine to form a new compound, the reaction is called a synthesis reaction. This is a definition that is given in the Ontario curriculum textbooks. Now here I have an animation for you. If you look at the slide, you will see that there are two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen. They are bonded between themselves, so they are of the same kind. Now, if you allow them to undergo a chemical change, this is what would happen. We will get a product in which there are two different elements combining together. Now we have a compound. We have water molecule where there is one oxygen and two hydrogen atoms and there are two such molecules. So synthesis leads to the formation of new products and the reactants will always be elements. Examples of synthesis. The first one is the reaction between carbon and oxygen producing carbon dioxide. The second reaction is the reaction between sulfur and oxygen producing sulfur dioxide. And the third reaction is the reaction between phosphorus and chlorine to form phosphorus trichloride. In all of these cases, the reactants are elements and the product formed is a new substance. Therefore, they can be called synthesis reactions. The next type of reaction we're going to look at is called decomposition reaction. As the name indicates, we're going to break something up. We are going to decompose the molecule. So, every time you look at a reaction, if there is only a single reactant, it indicates that it could be possibly a decomposition reaction. Or we can say, when a single compound breaks up to produce more than one compound, the reaction is called decomposition reaction. Decomposition reactions can in a way be considered as the opposite of synthesis reaction. Synthesis makes a new compound and decomposition breaks down compounds. For that reason, they are considered complementary to each other. Examples of decomposition reaction. The first reaction is where you heat calcium carbonate to produce calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. So a single compound is giving you two new compounds. Hydrogen peroxide, H2O2 will decompose to give you water and oxygen. This reaction can be enhanced by adding a little catalyst like manganese dioxide. As far as we are concerned, we are taking a single compound and making it into two different compounds. The third reaction is a decomposition of potassium chlorate, which gives you potassium chloride as solid and oxygen gas. The next type of reaction is called single displacement reaction. Sometimes this reaction is also called single replacement reaction. When a metal reacts with an ionic compound, the more reactive metal displaces the less reactive metal to form a compound. In order to predict whether a chemical reaction will take place when you have a single displacement reaction, you should be provided with a list of metals arranged in the increasing or decreasing order of their reactivity. And this is called the activity series. At a grade 10 level, if you have the activity series, you can actually predict single displacement reactions. Or if you know the standard reduction potentials, you can again predict the reaction because the more reactive metal will have a lower standard reduction potential value. Let's look at an animation of the possible reaction that could take place between copper and silver nitrate. 
we have a single atom of copper and two molecules of silver nitrate. If copper is more reactive than silver, then a chemical reaction will take place and it could displace both of the silver atoms. So, it's producing a new element and a new compound. The equation can be written like this. Copper, solid, reacts with aqueous solution of silver nitrate, that means silver nitrate dissolved in water, produces silver solid and copper to nitrate. Here is a different example. If you look at the reactants, there are three magnesium atoms, that's the element or the metal. They ha you have you two ionic compounds of aluminum, aluminum nitrate. And if you mix the two together, and if magnesium is more reactive, this is what would happen. The aluminum would be displaced because aluminum is less reactive, and magnesium changes into magnesium nitrate, and magnesium is the more reactive metal here. This is a net chemical reaction. Magnesium plus 2 Al NO3 twice gives you 2 Al plus 3 Mg NO3 two times. Here are some examples of single displacement reaction. Copper reacting with silver nitrate giving you silver plus copper 2 nitrate. An element reacting with a compound giving you a new element and a new compound. Obviously, in this case, copper is more reactive than silver. The next type of reaction we're going to look at is called double replacement reaction or double displacement reactions. When two compounds that are dissolved in water are mixed together, they exchange the metal ions to form new compounds. One of the compounds formed usually is a precipitate. It settles to the bottom. It may have a specific color. And from that, we can predict what the compound may be if you know what the reactants are. Let's look at a simple reaction here between lead to nitrate and calcium iodide. Lead in this case has got a valency of 2 and calcium has got a valency of 2. Nitrate and iodide, they both have valencies of negative 1. So it's a simple straightforward reaction. If you just exchange the metals, you get two new compounds. Now you have calcium nitrate and lead to iodide. Lead to iodide forms a precipitate. It has got a yellow color. Therefore, it tells us that a chemical reaction has taken place due to the formation of this new substance. So whenever you have double displacement reactions, you have two compounds giving you two different compounds. Let's look at a different example. Here the reaction is between sodium sulfate and barium nitrate. The metals, if you look at the valencies, sodium has got a plus 1 and barium has got a plus 2. Sulfate has got a negative 2 and nitrate has a negative 1. Let's see what the products are. If there's a chemical change, it forms barium sulfate, which is a white precipitate, and sodium nitrate. We get two molecules of sodium nitrate and one molecule of barium sulfate. Another example of a double displacement reaction. Here are some examples of double displacement reaction. The first reaction is between calcium chloride and potassium sulfate, which produces calcium sulfate and potassium chloride. All these compounds are dissolved in water. Lead to nitrate reacting with potassium iodide to give you lead to iodide plus potassium nitrate. And the last reaction is barium nitrate reacting with sodium chromate giving you barium chromate which forms a precipitate and has got a yellow color along with sodium nitrate. The next type of reaction we're going to look at is called combustion reaction. Whenever there's a combustion reaction, you will, you will need a fuel and oxygen. The fuel can be carbon, it could be a hydrocarbon, or it could be an organic compound containing carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen like glucose.
Whenever there's combustion, heat and light are byproducts. Methane reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water along with some heat and light. This is a typical example for a combustion reaction. Combustion reaction can be classified into two. One is complete combustion where there is excess of oxygen. So all of the hydrocarbons change into carbon dioxide and water. Incomplete combustion when you don't have sufficient oxygen some of the carbon in the hydrocarbon changes into carbon monoxide and the rest changes into carbon dioxide or it forms carbon and water. These are the possibilities for the products. So let's look at some equations that represent complete combustion and incomplete combustion. Here are some examples for complete combustion. Methane plus oxygen giving you carbon dioxide plus water plus heat plus light. The formula of methane is CH4, reacting with oxygen to give you CO2 and 2H2O. Glucose is C6H12O6, reacts with oxygen to give you carbon dioxide, water, heat and light. All combustion reaction produces heat and light. Here are some examples of incomplete combustion. Methane reacting with insufficient quantity of oxygen. In this case, we have one and a half molecules, or so three by two. Gives you carbon monoxide and water. The second possibility is if methane reacts with one molecule of oxygen, it gives you carbon plus water. Or you can get a mixture of carbon, carbon monoxide, and carbon dioxide along with water whenever there is incomplete combustion. That's it for now. If you like the video, please don't hesitate to rate, comment and subscribe. Thank you and have a great day.